Our next speaker is Mike Carr. Mike first was 25 years ago to help his speaking stay on track, stay on time, and eliminate filler words. Sound familiar to anyone? At that time, he had one wife, one kid, and very few stories. 25 years later, Mike cannot count the ways that Toastmasters has helped him with his presentation skills in life, church, and work. Today, he still has one wife, congratulations, but now has eight kids, many stories, and more life lessons. He is a member of Austin Toastmasters and Laughing Matters Toastmasters in Austin, Texas, in the United States of America, and has been blessed to represent his clubs in a contest or two. When not being a dad, Mike is a partner in a money management firm and speaks frequently to groups on subjects of leadership, determination, and effective communication. Mike is the 2020 world champion in public speaking, where he won the contest in Toastmasters' first virtual stage in history. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mike Carr. Mike Carr, the stage is yours. Thank you so much. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. All right. Yes, but we don't see you. <laughs> Mike, if you could just... I was running. I had been watching the World Championship of Public Speaking with some friends, and it just finished. I was several miles away from my house, and they told me, you have to be ready to be on camera if we call you. So I was running. I ran to my bathroom. I pulled off my current clothes. I threw them back behind me. I started putting on what I had worn the day of. And I kept looking at my phone. I would refresh it and nothing. 11 o'clock central time came. I looked at it and nothing. I couldn't tell if I hadn't placed. I was so afraid. I, I knew I hadn't, I hadn't placed. I was afraid I'd embarrassed myself. And all of a sudden I looked down and I saw this triangle with my picture at the top. And I said, oh man. Well, my family knows when I do that in my house, that oh man can mean that I either accidentally chopped off my arm or I just won the lottery or I dropped a grape on the floor. I tend to, that tends to be my natural, oh man. And so I said, oh man. And people started flooding to me from the rest of my family saying, what, what, what is it? What is it? Well, did you see the results? I came around the corner with this look on my face. And I said, I won. And then if you saw the video that my wife posted, my daughter, who is so very funny, started dancing and singing, my dad, my dad's the best in the world, which I would argue with that on any given day, any one of you can give a better speech than I do. But on that day, it happened to work my way and my daughter was celebrating. Interesting, her name is Journey, Journey Laurel, which means victorious journey, if you think about it. So that's the reason for the title of the speech. I'll tell you about this victorious journey, maybe some things that happen, and I'd like to spend our time going through some of the biggest questions or more, most often questions that I've been asked and some questions that people really should have asked me. For example, whenever you came and you said, hey, could you speak to the, the one country, one world speech, but yeah, I'd really like to do that. I love the mission of this club if I can work it on my calendar. What should have been asked me was, would you share the stage with, with Manoj and with Dr. Palawada? And I would have said, well, yeah, I'll cancel whatever I have and go do that. So those are just some examples. So the first question that has been asked an awful lot has been, how many times did you practice the speech? The, the number, I don't know. Somebody tried to calculate it for me because I, I, I talked about how that happened. But this speech went back years, about three years ago, we were traveling back from a vacation. I don't remember where. I think it had a beach involved, maybe some mountains. And I was reading a book that talked about caring less about others' opinions in our lives. In this book, the author said, that he had had a, a 
high school friend, a childhood friend, die in a drowning. And I had floods of memory come flying back on me about my dear friend Maria, who had meant so much in my life and the things that she taught me. I think it's one of the things that all of us can learn and look forward that if we're, if we're looking for material, if we're looking for creativity in our speeches, taking in a creative diet. Now, the, the idea of a creative diet, that's not original to me, but I have seen that with real creatives, the Beatles, many other individuals would have this practice where they would take in lots of creative information and creative data, art, music, and then they would spend time in silence. Our brains are amazing machines. They create all kinds of things, build puzzles, put connections together. And that happened to work for me in that semifinal speech, Blue. So I ran it that many times. Now that's the question. The question that someone probably should have asked me was, do you really drink that much coffee? And the reality is, yes, I do. As evidenced by my fourth cup this morning, I'm still working on two pots. But how many times did that speech run? I'm a big believer in consistent improvement, consistent habits. So every morning I would get in my car back when we were, we were commuting to work, I would get in my car and I, the first thing I would do is I would run the speech. And then when I would get in my car again on the way home, I would run the speech. Right before I went to bed, I might be brushing my teeth and I, I well, I, let's say I, my, I was, might be brushing my teeth. I did brush my teeth every night. Don't be scared. Don't, you, know, you don't want to get too close here. Thankfully, there's a barrier. But anyway, I'm brushing my teeth and run the speech. Get up in the morning making coffee run the speech. Someone calculated that up for me and said somewhere between probably 640 and 1,058 times. I don't know where they got such specific numbers, but it's just the consistency. It's making it a part. And, and that's how many times we run the speech. The, the next question that I get a lot is a lot of people hear that I have eight children. And I'll pause for a minute for you to swallow if you haven't heard that before yes i do have eight children and and yes they all are all, all are ours but a lot of people have asked how much contribution does your family play to the content of your speech and the reality is it's a whole lot my wife had this gift she births funny children and so my children are always doing something that's a little crazy, that's a little zany. There is a video out there on the internet that my daughter posted where my daughter and my son took a mattress out into the middle of the street in front of our house at 2 a.m. and my son was diving through fireworks, landing on this mattress as he bounced around. I, I saw it a few days later. I said, when did this happen? But it's that kind of thing that gives us rich material. But we all have rich material in our lives. Michael Jr., who's a great comedian, I would encourage you to go watch his TEDx talk just about the way you can look at the world to bring and, and see comedy everywhere, talks about looking at the world and making notes, constantly writing things down. We have rich experiences everywhere. Now, the question that someone should have asked me, and actually someone did ask, was, why do you have eight children? And I kind of wanted to say, did you take biology in high school? But the real answer to why we have eight children is spontaneity causes people. And when I say that in front of live audiences, I typically have to wait a little bit and then it hits people in stages, but I'll let you think about that as, as we go. Just to conclude, I do wanna tell you, probably the number one question I've been asked is, how will winning the world championship of public speaking change your life? 
And the real answer is I don't know. But I hope that it does not. And I'll tell you why. Before I wrote any of these speeches and before I won the world championship of public speaking, I'd had some experiences in my life that taught me I'd ha I'd ha I've had my, my shares of successes and failures, but the way I want to live my life moving forward was gauging success by have I reached out and really seen someone today? Have I reached out and encouraged someone today? Is the most important person in the world the person who is directly in front of me, and, and am I completely present? Am I full of joy just by having a glass of clean water, green grass under my bare feet, a deep breath of cool, crisp air in a Texas fall, in a beautiful blue sky? And my hope is that whether I'm the world championship of public speaking or I'm not, that I still find joy in those things going forward. So I hope it doesn't change me at all. I'm gonna to work toward that. And I would give any of you permission to see if it is changing me, you can call me and say, Mike, you need more coffee. Thank you for letting me join you. What a wonderful mission you have in this club. I am so glad to be a part. Thank you, Mike <laughs> and fellow coffee. Sure. Let's give Mike a loud round of applause. Thank you so much. Good Mike. Good Mike.